Hello boys and girls, Steve Fletcher here and welcome to another edition of the Vinyl Corner. This is my monthly little video blog for those small few number of people who are interested in such goings on around the place. Um, before we get started, if you haven't already, can I ask you please to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, really help me grow my online business. And if you've also got time, you can also check out all those social media pages that we all seem to have to have these days. Right, so this is the vinyl corner for March 2024. A couple of little um, interesting things uh, for today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of split this into sort of two parts, well, three parts, really. We're going to do some of the ones that I've bought that are vintage, old vinyl. What I mean by that is sort of stuff that has, you know, stood the test of time from way back in the day. It's quite old, a little bit tired, a little bit... Uh, ragged around the edges has obviously lived in someone's uh, living room or loft for a few years and then we're also going to look at some of the stuff that is brand new as well like printed within the last year or so and we're also then going to take a dive into my archive which i think we're on l i'm going to check that yes we're on l so we're going to be taking a look at the letter l random pull of artist album um, out of my pre-existing vinyl archive uh, under the letter L. So let's crack on. So we're going to start off with the old stuff. Now, the reason I bought this vintage stuff um, is because there's a whole load of albums that I love. You know, I've had them on CD or I've been streaming them or what have you. Um, but I, I do want them on vinyl because I'm a massive vinyl nerd. I'm a vinyl aficionado. I love hearing my music on vinyl. But... You know, with the best will in the world, you know, vinyl, new vinyl these days is quite expensive. So, yeah, if you can find a new vinyl, you know, for 20, 25 quid, you're doing well. Um, so I do think, you know, there's, there's um, a, a load of, of albums that, you know, I would buy, but I don't particularly, I'm, you know, with the best will in the world, you know, I, I'm not Mr. Burns. I don't have piles of cash to just throw at my local record shops. I wish I did, but I don't. So with the best will in the world, I'm just not going to buy them brand new. So I think, you know, the best way to sort of get these albums and go Ooh, over the vinyl is to buy the old ones, the old vintage ones, try and find ones that are, you know, uh, less crackly than some other ones. And these are, these vintage ones that I've got, you know, fall very much into that category. Now, this last month, um, I, I'm a lover of, of biographies. I, I read sort of any biography that I can get my hands on mostly sort of musical ones but i do also occasionally read the um, odd one that you know might be a little bit inspirational check out arnold schwarzenegger's biography for a start that's absolutely fantastic and in the last month i finished reading elton john's biography which caused me to which made me think that i'm gonna buy not all of them just a few uh, choice cuts from elton john's discography now elton john is one of those artists who you know i, I like him great admiration for what he's done i don't really need him around my house that much um you know if someone said oh, i've got a spare ticket to elton john do you want to go and see him i'd probably be like yeah yeah definitely that'd be cool um but i wouldn't really sort of make it my mission to you know to go and i wouldn't really make it my mission to sort of launch into his discography the reason for that is is just where on earth do you start you know he's one of these artists that just keeps on plowing out albums i think he's up to about you know, 30 albums released, and you just think, Christ, where on earth do you start, you know, with a discography like that? Um, and if you look at his set list from his live shows, you know, he, he pretty much has, has done like a greatest hits tour for the last 40 years. And most people are in agreement that although there are some good tracks, some tracks of note that he's recorded in the last 20 years or so, most of the albums that you need to get from elton john's career are the ones you know that sort of first half a dozen or so up to 75 76 where he had that massive burst of creativity that massive burst of fame and popularity so that's what i've decided i'm going to aim towards to that end i um, started with this one um which is madman across the water this album in fact it's worth buying alone it's got tiny dancer on it one of the best tunes that he's ever written um but it's also got possibly my favorite 
less known album track Elton John song, which is the title track, Madman Across the Water, which is an absolutely interstellar tune, and I absolutely rec- recommend anyone have a listen to just that track alone, Madman Across the Water. The other thing I didn't know until I sort of you know got the album home um, uh, is is how cool it is put together. You know, it's got this really nice, very cool, like I say, bit tired, um, lyric book in there, which gives you lots of cool pictures, lots of information. Um, the thing I really like about it as well is, as well as sort of giving you the lyrics, it tells you exactly the day that it was recorded as well. You know, this is from an era of, of album recordings where you literally went into the studio and you did, you just did a track. You just recorded it, either, you know, you might have recorded the whole thing live in the studio or, you know, bass drums piano and then a few overdubs but basically you went in with your track recorded it and it was done so i like that um about this so yeah this is um great album this is hang on so yeah madman across the water was released originally in 1971 so it really is part of that you know that first wave of albums that elton john did which is like i say is what i'm sort of aiming my purchasing towards and it is in fact the fourth um elton john album released so yeah really is part of that early wave i'm going to try and sort of get up to about you know uh captain fantastic which i do already have uh, i've already bought in case you were wondering i do already have um captain fantastic and the brown dirt cowboy and i do also have, already have goodbye yellow brick road as well in an annoying little bit of I don't know what's gone off. I have also bought the Elton John album from 1970. And in an annoying bit of I don't know what, it seems to have gone missing. I, I do remember it arriving in the house. So it's, it's here somewhere, but I don't know why I'm not able to lay my hands on it at the moment. So I did buy the Elton John album as well, which, um, you know, sort of just having a quick look at Wikipedia, that has got songs on there like your song take me to the pilot border song again some of that really good stuff that elton john has been a mainstay of elton john's career um i would love to be able to take you through that vinyl but i can't so you're just gonna have to sort of you know accept that i've bought that one even though i can't hold it up and wave it at you so continuing with the vintage stuff i have bought um the riddle by nick kershaw i also have human racing by nick kershaw as well the reason i bought this you know, charity shop find is I, for all my love of progressive music and, you know, jazz and fusion and rock and everything else, I am not a musical snob. I don't think I'm a musical snob. Uh, and to that end, I love well-crafted, brilliantly put together pop music. And if you're going to find some brilliantly crafted, well put together, well-written pop music, you can't go much wrong by listening to some of the great albums that were recorded in the 80s of which Nick Kershaw has done quite a few. So The Riddle was, you know, a a big album for him. It's not got some of the big name tracks like Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me or Wouldn't It Be Good, but it is still a very good album. And the other thing I love about it is it's got the 479 sticker, original sticker, which, bless, you know, I absolutely love this. And it's got a little, uh, this album belongs to, this originally belonged to Joanne Pearson, uh, when she was age 12, um, again, and I love stuff like that. I love albums, you know, that you buy them secondhand and they've got little inscriptions on them and things like that. I, I love all that kind of stuff. Got a nice little inlay with the lyrics and um, it is in fairly good condition. So quite pleased with that find. Okay, so that brings us to my fourth and final vintage um, uh, album for this month um which is cargo by men at work i've said it many times on uh, vinyl corner my love of men at work and in mostly my love of lead singer guitarist songwriter colin hay um you know go out listen to his solo stuff it's absolutely brilliant men at work you know very famous for the, the the track down under were more than that they were massive in the early 80s and um you know some of my most you know, loved pop music was done by by Men at Work. You know, you, as well as brilliant tracks like Down Under. Yeah, you've got songs like Overkill, Who Can It Be Now, uh, It's a Mistake, um, Be Good Johnny. 
Dr. Heckler, Mr. Jive. So yeah, the, the first two Men at Work albums, this is album two for Men at Work. This is Cargo. The first album was Business as Usual. They did do a third album, but the lineup was starting to change. Business was getting nasty. Personal relationships were going a bit strange, so I've not really prioritized getting the third Men at Work album. But the two, the first two Men at Work albums are the ones that you do need to get. Again, bless, I love the fact that it's got the original um, HMV sticker. This was an eBay purchase, so it is in a bit of a bad way. Um, I haven't spun it yet. It doesn't look too bad, the vinyl itself, so we'll see what happens there. But there it is. I love Men at Work. Which brings us to the new vinyl that we have bought. Now, the main one that I bought, I pre-ordered this when I knew it was coming, is this. I mean, I haven't even opened it yet. Um, I have listened to it, though. I've streamed it. Um, this is Mark Knopfler's Guitar Heroes um, album, single, really. Uh, and it's the Going Home um, track. Now, the Going Home track was originally featured on the Local Hero soundtrack from about 1983, 82, 83, 82, no, not 84, around very early 80s. And it's been a mainstay of both Dire Straits and a lot of Knopfler's tours. Um, and he recorded it, in case you didn't know, he's recorded it um, for the Teenage Cancer Trust, of which he is a patron, with a shed load of other artists throwing their own little bits in it's a little bit schizophrenic to listen to it because there's sort of guitar parts coming at you from from loads of different players but you know it's it's still a great track the track itself does still come through and you know for crying out loud you're supporting teenage cancer trust so you know just get off your high horse and just bloody well buy it i did go a little bit insane and i as well as buying the vinyl i sort of went sort of and anyone who knows me, I've said it before, anyone who knows me knows I'm a, a sucker for a set, you know, a box set or a set. So I've also bought the CD and I did buy the Blu-ray as well. I was hoping when I bought the Blu-ray, and maybe it's my fault, I might not have researched it a little bit. I was hoping the Blu-ray would have like a behind the scenes in the studio recording thing um, on there, but it doesn't. You guitarists, you'll be pleased to know that accompanying this I have also uploaded um, a version of uh, Going Home, the, of this, of the actual track, um, for you guitarists to learn um, as well. But featured on this, you know, I'm going to read through that. You've got Joe Nama Trading, Jeff Beck, his last official recordings, Richard Bennett, Bonamassa, Joe Brown, James Burton, Jonathan Kalin, Paul Carrick, Eric Clapton, Ry Cooder, Jim Cox, uh, Steve Cropper, Danny Cummins, Dwayne Eddy, Sam Fender, Guy Fletcher, Peter Frampton, Audley Freet, Vince Gill, David Gilmore, Buddy Guy, Tony Iommi, uh, John Jorgensen, I think, Knopfler himself, Joan Jett, Albert Lee, I could go on, you know, Hank Marvin, Rutherford, Satriani, Joe Louis Walker, Steve Vai, anyone who's ever held a guitar, basically, and he's famous, is on this. It must have been a Herculean uh, project to put together, um, and well done, basically. So the final new one I've bought this month is Blood Harmony by Larkin Poe. Uh, this is the most recent Larkin Poe album, although it is actually already two years old. Um, but it's, I, I love Larkin Poe. I was first introduced to Larkin Poe by an acquaintance many, many moons ago who I think had heard them on Radio 6, BBC Radio 6 or something like that. Been to see them three or four times. They are never bad. They're always brilliant. They basically just do this rock blues stuff and they do it very very well they also end the debate the ridiculously pointless misogynistically troglodyte neanderthal argument that you know uh, ladies can't play guitar now the reason i'm doing this one last is because larkin poe begins with an l and what i'm going to do is carry on with larkin poe for my l archive poll so here we go and as well as Blood Harmony, um, I'm going to sort of take you back through what we've got. Um, is I have got the live album, Paint the Roses. This was recorded through COVID period. It was that sort of time when we could mingle as long as we've been jabbed and swabbed and 
masked and all that stuff. Yeah, they recorded this live album. It was one of those things where, you know, uh, everyone was distant. There was no audience. It was one of the, you could, you could, you know, log that you, you, you could buy a virtual ticket and, you know, you got your applause virtually added and all that kind of stuff. It's fantastic. The reason that it is worth buying is because it contains the track Mad as a Hatter, which is the only, to date, official uh, release of this song. It's supposedly one of the first songs that they ever wrote as a band, um, but they've never been able to find an album that it fits on. It's a song very much about mental health. Um, and it's brilliant. It's an amazingly well done song. It's one of those songs, if I wrote it, I'd be like, I can't believe I wrote that. It's fantastically good. And this is, so they've sort of, you know, every album they do, people saying, he's mad as a hat on it, he's mad as a hat on it, he's mad as a hat on it, and it never is. So they've sort of put it on this live album, um, and thank goodness they did, because it's Babaroo. So that's Paint the Roses, Larkin Poe, and the New Deco Ensemble. It's a great album. What that does have on it is a lot of this album. This is the Self Made Man album from 2020. This came out sort of just as COVID was cracking. Um, and I think I had tickets to see them for this tour. And it just kept on getting put back and put back and put back and cancelled to the point where the tickets that we bought to see them on this tour, I actually went to see them on this tour. So, yeah, it's, it, you know, been a bit of a journey. Um, so yeah, great album, um, another one. Again, you know, they're not very long, 35, 40 minutes of just great rock blues. And also, the 2018 album Peach. Now, if I research, yes, I do, I'm right. There's, there is an album in between Peach and Self Made Man called Venom and Faith, which I did have on CD somewhere, but I think I might have to upgrade that to a vinyl. Again, this is a great one. Got a lot of sort of blue standards in here. Things like Black Betty and John the Revelator. Uh, stuff like that. Really, really good album. So it, you do owe it to yourself to check out the great and glorious Larkin Poe, who are this vinyl corner's L from the alphabet. So thank you very much, boys and girls. I hope you've enjoyed this little look through my vinyl collection. Um, all been well. We'll see you in April. Um, for the April Vinyl Corner. Please check out all my other videos, all my other guitar lessons, all my other stuff, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>